Shalom, and welcome to another edition of The Truth Shall Make You Free. I'm your host, Brother Nathaniel, and to my right, Deacon Asaph. Today's topic is Gentiles graft in. But before we get to the topic, let's open up as we always do with John 8, verse 32. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the truth, according to the Bible, brothers and sisters, will set us as a people free, make us as a people free. Now today we want to deal with the topic of grafting in. And we're going to open up with the history. Let's go to 2 Maccabees 6 real quick. I just want to get the history because I don't want you to forget. Remember, the Apocrypha was, was removed out of the King James Bible by Protestant Christians back in the 1700s. This was originally in the King James Version Bible. 2 Maccabees chapter 6, we want verse 6 through 9. 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So the history from the time of the Greeks was that the Greeks made a law that no Jew, none of the kingdom of Judah could call themselves a Jew. Read on. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in possession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. Watch this. And whosoever would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Whosoever would not become a Gentile should be put to death. That's the history that your ministers have omitted. Okay, from there, let's go back now. Let's go to Romans, okay? Now, when you read that history, you find the kingdom of Judah was fervent against the Greeks in that fighting against them. But you had many Israelites of the kingdom of Israel who gave in to the will of the Greeks, okay? For example, watch this. Romans 11, let's start at verse 1. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, has God cast away his people? Because many of your church groups, many of your ministers say, oh, the Israelites have done away with, God did away with the 12 tribes of Israel, no more. Read it again. I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. The answer is no. Come on. For I also am an Israelite. Because Paul said, I also am an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the tribe of Benjamin. He's of the tribe of Benjamin. Read. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. So your ministers are a bunch of lies that teach you the 12 tribes of Israel are no more. They're a bunch of liars. Read. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying... Right, Elijah made intercession for Israel, saying... Go ahead. Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Because you had a wicked African queen running around killing the prophets of Israel. And Elijah said, Lord, I'm alone. There's no more prophets of Israel left. Watch this. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. The Most High told Elijah, no, 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 you're not the last one, Elijah. I have reserved unto me 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Okay, remember that. That's the premise of this chapter, that there's a remnant of Israel that you, Elijah, you're not aware of, but I know them. That's what Romans 11 is all about. Watch this. Even so then, at this present time also. That's the proof right there. Even so also at this present time, during the time of Paul, even at this time period. Come on. There is a remnant according to the election of grace. There's a remnant of what? A remnant of Israelites according to the election and grace. I'm going to prove that election. Hold on. Give me Isaiah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Actually, get me Isaiah 10, 21. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 21. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 21. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. Read it again. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob unto the mighty God. Right, that was it? Yeah. Let's go back to Romans 11 now. Go ahead, that verse you left off at. Romans 11, verse 5. 
Go ahead. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Come on. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. What is the grace talking about? Grace means mercy. Okay? What, and what is the works? The works is referring to what? Animal sacrifice. Read that again. And if by grace. And if by grace, the mercy of Christ. Then it, is it no more of works? Then it's no more of works, meaning animal sacrifice. Come on. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Otherwise, mercy is no more mercy. Because the dispute was, if you couldn't sacrifice, if you did not sacrifice lambs, ox, and goats according to the Levitical covenant, you was no more of Israel. That's the dilemma that was going on. Come on. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. Watch this. What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for. Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for. What was Israel seeking for? Mercy and forgiveness. But how was they going about doing it? Through animal sacrifice. Come on. But the election hath obtained it. But the election hath obtained The elect of Israel obtained salvation. And the rest were blinded. The rest of Israel was blinded. What verse is that? Seven. You're in verse seven. Watch this. So who was blinded of Israel? Go to Matthew 23. I'm going to show you. Precept. Always understand this, brothers and sisters. Precept must be upon precept. If you don't understand something, believe me. Believe the Lord. There are precepts that help you understand. So we want precepts to help us understand who of Israel was blinded? Matthew 23. We want verse 15 and 16. 15 to 17. Read that. Matthew 23, verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made... A proselyte is a convert. Go ahead. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell You make yourself. him twofold... Two fall the child of hell than yourselves. Come on. Woe unto ye blind guides. What does he call them? Ye blind guides. Christ called the scribes and Pharisees blind guides. Come on. Would say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. What verse you at? 16. Go ahead. Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. What verse is that? 16. Go ahead. Jump to uh, 17. Ye fools and blind. Ye what? Ye fools and blind. Christ is calling them blind again. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. Ye blind guys which strain at a net and swallow a camel. Christ kept calling them blind. 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 Let's go back to Romans 11. And that was verse 7 I believe you were at. Romans 11 verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So who's the rest that was blinded? The scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and any Israelite that followed them, they were blind to the truth of the Bible. Real? Go ahead. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears they should not hear. God gave who the spirit of slumber? Eyes that they should not hear, ear, see, and ears that they should not hear. The scribes, the Pharisees, the blind. Go ahead. Unto this day, and David said, let their table be made a snare let and a trap. Let their table be made a snare and a trap. What's the table that became a snare and a trap to the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees? Hold that. Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 2, to explain what is the table. Is it talking about a coffee table? Is it talking about a picnic table? No. It's going to explain right here in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and write, make it. Write the vision. And make it plain upon table. Where's the visions of God written at? In the Holy Bible. This is the table. Write the visions and make them plain upon tables. These are the tables. The Bible is the tables of God. Okay? Let's go back to Romans 11. You should be at verse 10 now. Romans 11 verse 10. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see. Let whose eyes be darkened that they may not see? The scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Because when the Messiah came on the scene, they said, that ain't him. He ain't the man. He ain't the Savior. They rejected Christ. And their little flunky followers too followed them. Just like some of you today. Come on. 
Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Have those Israelites that followed the scribes, the Sadducees, and Pharisees, have they stumbled that they should fall? Meaning what? Have they stumbled in, this, in the truth of Christ that they should never get back up again? Hold that, hold that, hold that. Watch this. Give me Luke chapter 2, verse 34. I'm going to show you the pro a precept that explains Israel falling, certain of Israel falling. Okay? So it said, have they stumbled that they should fall? Watch this. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. Mm -hmm. And Simon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. Read it again. Behold, this child is set for the fall. This child, which is Christ, is set for the fall and rising. And rising. Again of many in Israel. Of many where? In Israel. Mm, was that it on that verse? That's it. Let's go back to Romans 11, 11 now. Romans chapter 11, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? So the scribes, the Pharisees, they were the ones that stumbled at the truth of Christ, who fell according to the scriptures, because they stumbled at Christ being the King of Kings, the Messiah. Go ahead. God forbid. So Paul was explaining, they haven't stumbled that they should fall, meaning never get up again. Go ahead. But rather through their fall. But rather through their fall. Salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Uh oh, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. For to provoke them to jealousy. To provoke the scribes, the Sadducees, and them unto jealousy. Read, read that part again. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. So you get, you, you're fumbling right there. Salvation has come unto the Gentiles. For to provoke them to jealousy. I want you to remember that part right there. For to provoke them to jealousy. I'm going to say it again. For to provoke them to jealousy. For to provoke them to jealousy. Paul's quoting somebody. Who's he quoting? He's quoting Moses. Watch this. Deuteronomy. 32 verse 21. See, Paul, what you all need to understand, because a lot of you, some of you Israelites go, I don't accept Paul. He's so confusing. Shut up. You need to be taught, okay? Paul was a master of the law. When the scriptures say he was a Pharisee, the term referred to the masters of the law, okay? Deuteronomy 32 verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Here's the prophecy. The Most High through Moses says, They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanity. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. And I will move those to jealousy. Read that part again. And I will move them to jealousy. And I will move them to jealousy. With those which are not a people. To, with those which are not a people. That's where Paul was quoting from. Read that part again. Just that part. And I will move them to jealousy. Move them to jealousy means provoke them to jealousy. With those which are not a people. With those which are not a people. What, what was Moses prophesying about? That's a hard saying right there. Hold that. No, let this go. Go to Romans 10, 19. Because Paul quoted the same thing in Romans chapter 10, verse 19. Again, Romans chapter 10, 19. But I say, did not Israel know? Didn't Israel know what? First Moses said. Moses said in Deuteronomy 32, 21. First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. I will provoke them to jealousy by those which are no people. Was that it? And by a foolish nation. And by a foolish nation. I will anger you. I will anger you. What's he talking about? Dang. Is that talking about God's going to provoke the Israelites by the Chinese or the Japanese or the white man? Hmm. I'm going to help you right there. Hold that. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. We want verse 9 and 10. Remember it says, I will provoke them to jealousy with those which are not a people, I'll provoke them to jealousy with those which are a foolish nation. Who is God talking about through Moses? 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. But ye are a chosen generation, mm. a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, mm. that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Watch this. Which in time past were not a people. Which in times past were not a people. But are now the people of God. But are now the people of God. Who's Peter talking about? Here's the last precept to help you. Hold on. Go to Isaiah 7 and 8. We're going right back to Peter. We're going right back there. 
Isaiah 7, verse 8. Watch this. I need you all to take out your Bibles, your pens, your papers, get your apocryphas. Take your notes. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 8. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin. Within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken. Shall Ephraim be broken. That it be not a people. Read that part again. And now about Ephraim. All I want is Ephraim. And five years shall Ephraim be broken. And five years shall Ephraim be broken. That it be not a people. That Ephraim be not a people. Read it again. And five years shall Ephraim be broken. That it be not a people. So not a people is referring to who? Ephraim. Ephraim is what? The head of the northern kingdom. Let's go back to 1 Peter 2 and 9 now. 1 Peter 2 verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 10. Which in time past were not a people. Mm, so who is this talking about? Ephraim and the northern kingdom. Read it again. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. But are now the people of God, referring to Ephraim and the other tribes of Israel. Now, let's go back to Romans chapter 11, verse 11. Romans 11, verse 11. I say that. Have they stumbled that they should fall? Did Judah stumble? Did Judah the scribes, the Pharisees, and them stumble that they should fall, meaning fall and never get up again? God forbid. The answer is no. But rather through their fall, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So who was those Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy? Moses prophesied about it. Peter spoke about it. Ephraim and the other tribes of Israel. Now let's keep going down We're in verse 12. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world. What does it mean if the fall of them? Who fell? You had many in the kingdom of Judah that fell, like the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. They fell at the understanding of Christ. Read it again. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world. What does it mean, the riches of the world? Rich in what? We jump down to verse 33 of the same chapter. Verse 33. All the depth of riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God. All the depth of riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God. So what is the riches talking about? The wisdom and knowledge of God. Go back up to verse 12. To verse 12. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world. Now you're confused about the word world. You hear the word world and don't look it up in a regular dictionary. One of the meanings of the word world is a society of people having common interests and goals. Understand that. I'm going to show you that. John 18 and 20, I think it is, about the word world. How Christ used the word world when it came to him teaching. Okay? John 18, verse 20. John chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple wherewith the Jews always resort. See that? Wherewith all the Jews always resorted. So what is the world Christ spoke to? The world of the Jews. The world of the Jews. You understand that? Let's go back now to Romans 11 and 12 again. Read Romans story. chapter 11 verse 12. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world. If the fall of them. Who's the them that fell? Those under the, in the kingdom of Judah. The scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. And their followers. They, they stumbled at Christ. And the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles. And the diminishing of them, the law was doing away with them. Meaning what? They stumbled, they fell, the Lord was raising up the rest of Israel now. Come on. How much more their fullness? How much more their fullness if they repent and get themselves right? That's what Paul is saying here. Come on. What verse you at? 13. Go ahead. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. What does it mean Paul was the apostle of the Gentiles? Hold that. Get me John 7 and verse 35. Because that term Gentiles keeps coming up in the New Testament. And many times, a lot of you at home, you stumble at it. John 7, 35. John chapter 7, verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves. Then said Judah amongst themselves. Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Where's Christ going that we can't find him? Will he go unto the dispersed? The word dispersed means scattered. Go ahead. Among the Gentiles? Who was dispersed amongst the Gentiles? The Israelites. The northern kingdom primarily. And teach the Gentiles? What did they call the northern kingdom of Israel? Gentiles. Read the whole verse again. Then said the Jews among the, themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? 
Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Next one. Let's go to Acts 13, verse 46. Acts chapter 13 and verse 46. Watch this. Okay. Because Paul said, And as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Meaning he's going to make it crystal clear who he's a, an apostle to. What's his mission? What's his goal? Acts chapter 13, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. So who were they talking to? The kingdom of Judah. The Jews. That's what the word Jew is short for. Judah. Jew is short for Judah. It said it was what? Read it again. It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Why was it necessary that the word of God first be spoken to the kingdom of Judah? We're going to prove it later on. Go ahead. But seeing you put it from you. Since you of the kingdom of Judah, you put it from you. And judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So you stuck on stupid right there. So now let's get to prophecy. Zechariah 12 and 7. Zechariah, let's see what Paul was quoting from. Watch this. I'm going to show you how the words change so you understand it's talking about the same thing, though. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Stop. Remember Paul said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But since you find yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Read it again. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. How? By the word being preached to Judah first. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So that the other tribes of Israel don't magnify themselves against Judah. You understand that? So in the New Testament, they're not calling them the, what we just read there, referring to the other tribes. It's using another word, Gentiles. Okay? Now let's go back to Romans 11. And you are at verse uh, 13. Romans 11 and verse 13. Watch this. Romans 11 verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles. So who was he an apostle to? The other tribes of Israel. Read. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Come on. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. What was he saying? If by any means I may provoke to emulation, meaning jealousy, them which are my flesh. What tribe was Paul? Benjamin. What kingdom was Paul of? The kingdom of Judah. The Jews. Read that bottom part again. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. And might save some of them of the kingdom of Judah. Read. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but light from the dead? The reconciling of the world. The recon What reconciled us? Let's hold on. Get me, um, we already explained the word world, right? Yep. Referring to the world of the Jews, the world of Israel. Watch this. Actually, let's do world again. Isaiah 45. Uh, is it verse 17? Yeah. Isaiah 45. I'm going to give you another precept to help you explain the word world in the Bible. Isaiah 45, and I think it's verse 17. Isaiah 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So Israel is the world without end. Israel is the world without end. Back to Romans 11. And what verse was that? Verse 12? No, 13. 13. 13. I mean, 15, 15, I'm sorry, 15. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. For if the casting away of them. The casting away of who? Of the kingdom of Judah, who was cast away? The scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees that rejected Jesus as the Christ. They were cast away. Read it again. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. Stop. The reconciling. The reconciling. What does, what reconciled us? Hold on. Go to 2 Chronicles, chapter 29. Let's explain what gave us reconciliation with the Most High God. 2 Chronicles 29, we want verse 23 and 24 to help us understand reconciling us to God. 2 Chronicles 29, verse 23 and 24. 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 23. And they brought forth the heat the he goats for the sin offering before the king and the congregation 
and they laid their hands upon them, and the priests killed them, and they made reconciliation with their blood upon the altar to make an atonement for all Israel. See that? So what made, re what made an atonement for all Israel? The sacrifice of the animals, okay? That was the reconciliation. So now, that was in the Old Testament, right? You might be going, oh, so what? The reconciling of the world of Israel. How do we do it? How do we do it? Romans 5 and 10 now. Because no longer is it the ox, the bull, the goat, the lamb. Romans 5 verse 10. For if when we were enemies. For if when we were enemies, when we broke commandments of God. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. That's the sacrifice. That's how we got reconciled again. Read it again. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. See that? No longer are we reconciled through the goat, the ox, the bull, the lamb. We are reconciled to God by the death of his son called Jesus the Christ. I hope you understand that. Let's go back now. Get me, let's go back to Romans 11 now and verse 15 again. Romans 11 verse 15. For if the casting away of them Stop. be... For if the casting away of them... Who has cast away the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees of the kingdom of Judah that rejected Christ? For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. What reconciled us? The death of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ. Understand that. The sacrifice of Christ reconciled the world of Israel to God again. Go ahead. What shall the receiving of them be? What shall the receiving of them be? Meaning of them that stumbled, them that fell. But life from the dead. They shall have life from the dead. Meaning if those scribes, those Pharisees, those Sadducees repent, they shall have everlasting life. That's what Paul is saying. Come on. For if the first fruits be holy. For if the first fruit be holy. Who is the first fruit? Hold that. Give me 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 23. For if the first fruit be holy. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 23. We want to understand that first fruit. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 23. Watch this. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit. Christ what? Christ the first fruit. Christ is the first fruit. Back to Romans 11 now. Back to Romans 11, verse 16. Romans 11, verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. The lump is also holy. Who's the lump? 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7 explains the lump. Who is the lump? 1 Corinthians Chapter 5 and verse 7. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump. That ye may be a new lump. Who was Paul speaking to? The Israelites in Corinth. The Israelites in Greece. Let's go back to Romans eleven sixteen 16 again. Romans 11 verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy. Which is Christ. The lump is also holy. The Israelites. And if the root be holy. And if the root be holy. Who is the root? Hold that. Revelation 22. Last book of the Bible. Revelation 22 verse 16. Revelation 22 and verse 16. Revelations 22 verse 16. I, I Jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. Christ is what? I am the root and the offspring of David. Let's go back to Romans eleven sixteen 16 again. Romans 11, verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. What are the branches? Let's go to John chapter 15 and verse 5. John 15, verse 5. This is what Christ said. John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine. Christ said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Who is he speaking to? The apostles and the Israelites that followed him. I am the vine. You are the branches. Let's go back to Romans 11 now. Now we're in verse 17, correct? Verse 17. Watch this. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. That's verse 17. Verse Let's 17. read 17 again. Slow. And if some of the branches be broken off. Stop. Who are the branches that were broken off? Because that's where your church ministers twist many of the scriptures. Hold that. Like I always say, let's go to Jeremiah 11. All of the New Testament scriptures are based upon the Old Testament writings. I'm going to say it again. All of the New Testament scriptures are based upon the Old Testament writings. Jeremiah 11, 
We want just two verses, verse 16 and verse 17. Okay, Jeremiah 11, verse 16 and 17. Jeremiah 11, verse 16. Watch this. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree. Fair and goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it. He hath kindled fire upon us. And the branches of it are broken. And the branches of it are broken. And the branches of it are broken. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee. The Lord pronounced evil upon the twelve tribes. For the evil of the house of Israel. For the evil of the house of Israel. And of the house of Judah. And of the house of Judah. Was that it? Which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense unto Baal. So you see what the Lord calls a good olive tree. But he sent fire upon us and the branches were broken. Let's go back now. To Romans 11, verse 17. Now you know where Paul's getting this from. Romans 11, verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off. Who were the branches that were broken off? We just read it in Jeremiah 11, verse 16 and 17. The branches broken off primarily was the kingdom of Israel. You had remnants of Judah broken off too. Why? Because of their idolatry. Because of their sin. Go ahead. And if some of the branches be broken off. Watch this. And thou being a wild olive tree. And thou being a wild olive tree. Remember in Jeremiah eleven sixteen, 16. He said, I called your name a good olive tree. But we became wild olive tree. Why? Because of our sin. Come on. And thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them. Oh, 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 oh. It said we were grafted. They were, gra they were grafted in amongst them. And with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive. And became partakers of the root, which is Christ, and what? And the fatness of the olive tree. And the fatness, meaning the blessings of the olive tree. What is Paul making reference to? That branches were broken off, but they were grafted in and became partakers of the blessings. Let's hold that. Go to Acts 15. I'm going to show you. We just read, we went over this on another episode. Acts 15, verse 7 through 9. Acts 15, verse 7 through 9. Because in Acts 15, the Apostle Peter had to explain what happened with Cornelius of the Italian band. Come on. Acts chapter 15, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto Watch them, this. Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Now, you might not know who these Gentiles are. It's referring to Cornelius. And we're going to find out what was the true nation Cornelius came from. Go ahead. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. Here, this is what it means when Paul said they were made partakers of the fatness of the olive tree. God did what? And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost even as he did unto us. Gave them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. So that's what it means in Romans 11 when it said they became partakers of the goodness and fatness of the olive tree. Was that it? That's it. Now, from just stay right there. Jump to verse 15 and 16. Verse Same 15. Chapter. Now you want to know what Cornelius was. Here's the answer. And to this agree, the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacles of David, which has fallen down. What does it mean, the tabernacles of David, which has fallen down? The kingdom of Israel fell and was split into two kingdoms. You had the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel, also called Ephraim. Go ahead. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might... So stop, see. wait, wait, read that part again. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. He will set up what? The twelve tribes of Israel again. He will build it again. What is Paul and uh, Peter talking about? Cornelius. Cornelius of the Italian band was of the northern kingdom of Israel. Okay? You forgot about them. Let's go back to Romans 11. Romans 11 verse 17 again. Romans 11 verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them. They were grafted in amongst them. Come on. And with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive Meaning they got the Holy Spirit. They got the Holy Ghost, just like Peter and the Jews did. Peter of the kingdom of Judah got the Holy Ghost. So did the northern kingdom, Cornelius and his friends and family. Come on. Boast not against the branches. So, 
Paul comes back and says, boast not against the branches. Go ahead. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. If you boast, you bear not the root. But the root, thee. But the root is who? The root is Christ. Christ is bearing you up. Hold that. Let's go right back to Zechariah 12 and 7. Because he won't, Paul said, don't boast against the branches. Meaning what? Don't magnify yourselves against Judah. Don't boast yourselves against Judah because they stumbled, because they fell. That's what the prophecy said here in Zechariah 12, verse 7. Zechariah 12, verse 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That's why Paul said in Acts 13, verse 46, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been preached unto you, you kingdom of Judah. Read it again. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Why? That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Meaning the other tribes of Israel. Do not magnify themselves against Judah. So that they don't magnify themselves against Judah. What does it mean to magnify themselves against Judah? Boast against Judah. Let's go back to Romans 11. And you were in verse 7. Was it 18? 18. 18. Read that again. Boast not against the branches. Don't magnify yourselves against Judah. But if thou boast. Thou but if you magnify yourself. If you boast. Thou bearest not the root. You don't bear Christ up. But the root, the Christ is the one that holds you up. Christ is the one that died for your sins so that you could be grafted back into this truth. That's what the message was Paul gave to the northern kingdom of Israel. What verse are you at? 19. Now we're at 19. Come on. Thou will say then. Thou will say then. You of the northern kingdom of Israel, you will say then. The branches were broken off. Yeah. The branches were broken off according to prophecy, Jeremiah 11, verse 16 and 17, because of Judah... You had many rebellious scribes, Sadducees, and Pharisees. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. That Ephraim of the northern kingdom might be grafted in. Because Ephraim and the other tribes went into idolatry. But the scripture says they're going to be grafted in again. Read it again. Thou will say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Mm -hmm. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Because of unbelief. Who had unbelief of Judah? The scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, many of the Levitical priests, they rejected Christ. Read it again. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Ephraim, you and the other tribes of Israel, you stand by what? By faith. You stand by Christ because that's the faith. You stand by Christ. What verse you at? 20. Go ahead. Be not high-minded. Don't be high-minded. Don't magnify yourselves against Judah. Because the scriptures tell you about that. Don't magnify yourselves against Judah. Don't boast against Judah. Go ahead. Be not high-minded, but fear. Be not high-minded, but fear. That's what Paul said. Come on. For if God spared not the natural branches. For if God spared not the natural branches. What is, why is he calling Judah the natural branches? Because when you read in the New Testament... Who was dealing with the laws of Moses? The kingdom of Judah. That's why he called them the, the natural branches. They were raised in the law. Like Peter and Paul and them. They were raised in the law. Whereas Ephraim and the other tribes were not. I'm going to prove that. Hold that. Get me 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 2. I knew a man in Christ above 14. You in 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Read it again. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Stop. Ye know that ye were, 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 were Gentiles. Carried away unto these dumb idols. Carried away unto these dumb idols. Wait, let's go back to Jeremiah because that's the same thing the prophet Jeremiah prophesied about. Jeremiah 11, verse 16 and 17. Okay, it's important for you to learn this history. That way you don't be confounded when you get to Romans 11. Because Paul wrote things hard to be understood. Jeremiah 11, verse 16. Watch this. The Lord called thee thy name, a green olive tree. All 12 tribes were a green olive tree. Fair and goodly fruit. Mm -hmm. With the noise of a great tumult, he had kindled fire upon it. He kindled fire upon us. And the branches of it are broken. And the branches of it were broken. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee have pronounced evil against thee. Why? 
for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah. What did they do? Which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. In offering incense unto Baal. What is that? Idolatry. Dumb idols. Back to 1 Corinthians 12 and 2 again. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 2. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. That's the prophecy. That's why I always make the statement. The New Testament scriptures are based upon Old Testament writings. The New Testament scriptures are based upon Old Testament writings. Back to Romans 11. Romans 11. And what verse are you at? Verse 21 or 22? Romans 11 verse 21. Come on. For if God spared not the natural branches. Those that were raised in the law. He didn't spare Judah that were raised in the law. Take heed lest he also spare not the thee. Lord won't also the Lord won't spare you either. Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Zebulon, Asher. He ain't gonna spare you either. Go ahead. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. Paul says, Behold, the goodness and severity, meaning the severeness of God. On them which fell, severity. On them which fell of the kingdom of Judah, meaning the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, God was very severe. But toward that the goodness. But toward thee. The who? The of the northern kingdom, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Gad, uh, Zebulon, Asher, Naphtali, Issachar. But on thee, goodness. But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. If you continue in the goodness of God, which is Christ. That's the stipulation. Come on. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. Otherwise, Ephraim and Manasseh, the rest of you tribe, you also shall be cut off. Paul is warning you. Come on. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief. Now concerning Judah, concerning Judah, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, if they what? Abide not still in unbelief. Meaning if they repent. Shall be grafted in. They're going to they be grafted right back in. What verse you at? 23. Just read 23. Go ahead. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Let's, let's, let's deal with this grafting in. What is Paul talking about? He's using an example of wood. And he's talking about grafting in pieces of wood. Like in, with a tree. They have something called with trees. Where they take one branch from one tree and they graft it to another tree. That's what Paul is talking about. Where is he getting the analogy from? Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel the 37th chapter. And we want verse 15 to 19. Write these scriptures down, brothers and sisters. Ezekiel explains the grafting in right here. Ezekiel 37, verse 15 through 19. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel as companions. Wait a minute. Take thee one stick and write upon it Judah and who? And Israel, his companions. Who were the companions of Judah? Benjamin and Levi. You can read about that in the book of Kings. It said after Solomon died, the only tribes that stayed with Judah was Levi and Benjamin. Read it again. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for children and for the children of Israel, his companions. Come on. Then take another stick. Then take another stick and write upon it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. And write upon it for Joseph, the stick of who? Of Ephraim. Of Ephraim of the northern kingdom. And for all the house of Israel, his companions. Who was his companions? Because with Ephraim, you had ten tribes. You can read about that in the book of Kings when Rehoboam became a king. It said with Ephraim, you had Manasseh, you had Gad, you had Reuben, you had Zebulon, you had Asher, you had Naphtali, you had Issachar. Understand that. Read that again. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write it upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Benjamin and Levi went with Judah. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Those were the ten tribes. Go ahead. And join them one to another. And, and what? And join them one to another. This is the grafting in. Do what? And join them one to another into one stick. Into one stick. The grafting in again. Come on. And they shall become one in thine hand. They shall become one stick in your hand. What verse you at? 17. Come on. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying... Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? What do you mean by this, Ezekiel? Because listen, he had a stick 
with Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and then he had another stick with Ephraim and the other Israelites, he put them together. That's why we got the 12 tribes sign. We got a big piece of wood, and we put Judah, Benjamin, and Levi together with Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, Issachar, and so forth and so on on the sign. We put them together. And what do the Israelites say when they walk by? They say what? And say unto them, and, oh, and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? That's what we hear in the street. What do you mean the American blacks is with the Haitians and the uh, 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 West Indian blacks? And we all with who? Puerto Ricans? Native American Indians? What? The natives that were on this side of the world? Yes, according to 2nd Ezra 13, verse 40 through 45. Those are our people. Those are the 10 tribes of Israel. What? I can't believe it. I can't understand it. I, I know some history, though, that when a white man came against us, we filed for, fled for sanctuary, and American Indians helped us. I, I know some of that history. But the rest of them, like the Mech, they're always fighting us. They're always against us. Those are your brethren. Understand that. What verse you read down to? Verse 19 next. Go ahead. Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will have the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick. Make them what? And make them one stick. Do y'all understand the prophecy? Do you understand? You must get over your hatred one for another. Speaking of which, hold on, what, did you finish 19? And they shall be one in mine hand. Watch this, Isaiah 11. I want this, the verse... I think that says Judah won't be pissing Ephraim off. Isaiah 11, it might be verse 13. Isaiah 11 and 13. Isaiah 11 verse 13. Is that it? The envy also of Ephraim. The envy also of Ephraim. Shall depart. Shall depart. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Watch this. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. That's what Paul was talking about. Don't magnify yourselves against Judah. Okay, understand that. Read that part again. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. How is Judah vexing Ephraim? They were saying the other Israelites scattered. They ain't Israelites. Just like today. Watch throughout YouTube. Listen to these Israelites. We don't accept those light-skinned Israelites. They too light. They don't look like us. They got to look like Shaft and, Cle Shaft and <laughs> Cleopatra. They don't look like we don't accept them. Of course, those who ever, even amongst Judah and Ephraim, whoever's fathers are Esau, they're not our people. But whoever father is of Negro and Indian descent, those are Israelites. Make no misunderstanding. I don't care how light they are. The most high don't care about their complexion. It's the seed that he's looking for. Understand that. Okay, read that again. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart. So Ephraim, your envy shall depart because you do envy Judah. Because you got some of them now of like a tribe of Simeon. We don't want to see the image of the black man. They jealous of us. We don't want to see it. No, 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 don't have no t-shirt with the image of Christ. Just say no images, no, don't, don't show it. Because you envy Judah, but you're going to accept Judah as the head tribe because Christ is of the tribe of Judah. Understand that. Come on. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Come on. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. Ephraim, the prophecy is you shall not envy Judah no more. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. And Judah, you shall not vex Ephraim with your mouth. Always speaking of the ordained Israelites. Look at them. They too light skinned to did. I remember coming up, if you was a high yellow black, man, some Israelite camps didn't accept you. You simple as hell. It's the seed of your father that the Most High is looking for. Back to Romans 11. Romans 11, verse, verse 23. 23. And, if they, and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, if shall, Judah don't abide in unbelief no more, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. God is able to graft them in again. Come on. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature. Wild by nature because we were worshiping idols. Ephraim and them was worshiping idols. Come on. And were grafted contrary to nature. You were grafted contrary to nature. Why is it contrary? Because Ephraim and them were not raised in the laws of Moses. They were not raised to understand. Okay. 
But the Bible says they were grafted in again. Read that part again. And were grafted contrary to nature. That's what it means, contrary, because they were raised up worshiping idols. That's what it means when it says grafted and contrary to nature. Go ahead. Into a good olive tree. They were grafted right back into their nation. That's the good olive tree in Christ, Israel. How much more shall these... Which be natural branches. How much more shall these, which be the natural branches, like of Judah, those that, that were raised in the law, that know the law, be grafted into their own olive tree? Be grafted into their own olive tree. Come on. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Don't be ignorant of this mystery, brothers and sisters. Come Lest on. ye should be wise in your own conceit. Lest you should be wise in your own conceits. Oh, the Lord ain't dealing with the northern kingdom no more. Oh, nobody knows. It. Shut up! Don't be wise in your own conceits. Come on. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. Blindness in part has happened to Israel. Who was blinded? Of Judah you had described the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Come on. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles. Until the fullness of the Gentiles, meaning the rest of Israel, of the northern kingdom under Ephraim. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Until they repent and come into this truth. Come on. And so all Israel shall be saved. Stop, read it again. And so all Israel shall be saved. Read it again. And so all Israel shall be saved. Read it again. And so all Israel shall be saved. Verse 26 is explaining the whole chapter to you. And so all Israel shall be saved, meaning all 12 tribes shall be saved. Ain't nobody getting left behind. Ain't nobody going to be lost. Understand that. That's what verse 26 is letting you know. If you was confused from verse 1 to 25, verse 26 clears it up for you. Read it again. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, mm. and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So this chapter ain't talking about the white man. It ain't talking about the African man. It ain't talking about the uh, Arab man. It ain't talking about the Chinese. It ain't talking about none of them. Read it again. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. From ungodliness from who? From Jacob. From who? From Jacob. It didn't say the Arabs? From Jacob. Come on. For this is my covenant unto them. Unto them. When I shall take away their sins. When he shall take away the sins of the Israelites. As concerning the gospel. As concerning the gospel of Christ. They are enemies for your sake. Who was the enemies he's talking about? The scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. Why? Because they was killing the Israelites that followed Christ. Paul was an example. Any Israelites that was following Christ, they were killing them. So they were the enemies. Read that again. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But... As, but as touching the election, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. They are beloved for the Father's sake. Paul is an example. Paul started out as an enemy to Christ. He started out as an enemy to Israel. And what happened? He repented and became chosen and elect. Come on. For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Because the Most High ain't going to repent for what he did. From the beginning, the gospel, the scriptures, the Bible was only for the 12 tribes of Israel. He ain't repenting of that. He ain't changing his mind. Come on. For as ye in time past have not believed God. For as you, Israel, you Ephraimites and the rest of you, as you in time past didn't believe God. Yet have now obtained mercy. Now you've obtained mercy. Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, Issachar. Listen good. Now you've received mercy. Come on. Through their unbelief. Through the unbelief of that Judah had. The scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Levites. Come on. Even so have these also not believed that through your mercies they also may obtain mercy. So the Lord is doing what? Because Judah and them didn't believe, he had mercy on Ephraim. He said the same way the Lord brought you in because of that, all Israel's getting that mercy. Come on. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief. God concluded all 12 tribes in unbelief. That he might have mercy upon all. That he might have mercy on all. That's what the sacrifice of Christ is all about. So no matter what kingdom you come from, the kingdom of Judah or the kingdom of Ephraim, we all have in mercy in Christ. Every last one of us. We get called to this truth. Come on. All the depth of riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. 
For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Who has known the mind of the Lord? Come on. Or who hath been his counsel? Who has counseled the Lord? Come on. Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? Come on. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. So, brothers, sisters, I hope you understand Romans 11. It's about the two, kingdom of Israel, two kingdoms of Israel. So, from there, let's go to Malachi 3, verse 6. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So the Israelites are not done away with, brothers and sisters. They're not done away with. That's why, say, and the Lord said, he don't change. So he ain't dealing with another nation of people. He has only dealt with the Israelites from Genesis to Revelation. Understand that. Real quick, give me that one in Jeremiah, is it 33? Where it says, um, or 31, about the ordinances. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the, by ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If these ordinances depart from before me, so meaning if the sun, the moon, and the stars depart from the Lord, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Only then will the seed of Israel cease from being a nation. So, do we see the sun, the moon, and the stars still up there in the heavens? Yes! So what does this prove? The seed of Israel is still upon the earth. The 12 tribes of Israel are still upon the earth. That's why in Romans eleven twenty six it says, And so all Israel shall be saved. Okay? There's What's more. It? Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord. If the heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all they have done, saith the Lord. So the heavens can't be searched out. So with that, brothers and sisters, we give all praises to the Most High, and we say shalom. Shalom, Israel.